Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The British woman who could have married Hitler. Unity Mitford. Inside of Germany, during Hitler's time as a dictator, there were many women who became obsessed with him. He had a cult of followers that every time he appeared in public would cheer, and in many times cry, as they were so overwhelmed by seeing him. Hitler was greeted with mass salutes and by crying women, but to the people of Germany he portrayed himself as a single bachelor. It was believed by doing this it would help Hitler's appeal with the population, and especially women. He did marry, as the Second World War was coming to an end, to his long-lasting companion, Eva Brown, but his love life remains a rather bizarre one. But there was one member of the British aristocracy who became infatuated and even obsessed with Adolf Hitler, and, in a way, she began to even stalk the dictator of Germany. Unity Valkyrie Mitford was one of the famous Mitford sisters. She was the fifth of seven children born to David Freeman Mitford, the second Baron Reedsdale, and his wife Sidney. She was the daughter of an MP and a Unity, along with her sisters Diana, Jessica and Nancy, were known as the Mitford sisters. With regards to where Unity got her name, her sister Nancy stated, She was christened Unity after an actress my mother liked, and Valkyrie after the War Maidens, and also because her grandfather was a friend of Wagner. Wagner composed the Flights of the Valkyries, and it was known that Hitler too idolised him. Inside of a large family, Unity was not the centre of attention, as her other sisters were favoured due to their looks and intelligence. Inside of a big family, it was hard for Unity to showcase herself and stand out, and it's believed that, for shocks, she could have sided with Nazism and flocked to Germany because of this. She wished to carve a future for herself, but her sisters were always favoured over her. When Unity discovered Hitler and the Nazis, it's considered that she saw this as a great opportunity to shock the British press, and also get publicity for herself and become known as the most outrageous Mitford sister. While she was a young girl, she shared a room with her younger sister Jessica, who herself was a devoted communist. Together the two in one room divided the room between each of them with a chalk line. Jessica's side was decorated with images of Lenin and the communist images of the hammer and the sickle, but Unity's side was decorated with images of Adolf Hitler and swastikas. Both of the girls were united in their devotion to political figures, but were separated by the completely different ideologies of Nazism and communism. In 1932, Unity was her debut on the social scene, and that year her sister was noted to have been having an affair with Oswald Mosey. Diana Mitford left her husband to begin the affair with the founder of the British Union of Fascists. Their father was outraged by Diana's behaviour and the shame that Diana had brought the Mitford family, and he banned anyone for visiting Diana and the Mosley. Mosley is considered today to have been a racist figure comparable to Hitler in his ideology. Unity, as she was rebelling, disobeyed her father's command, and she met with Mosley at a party in the summer of 1932. Oswald Mosley's son, Nicholas, claimed that Unity was very extrovert and that she became a member of the BUF and even walked around regularly in the black shirt uniform, synonymous with the group and with Mussolini. She also was known for interrupting communist meetings in which she would heckle the speaker and perform the right arm of fascist salute. Both Unity and Diana Mitford grew close in their political beliefs and they travelled together to Germany as part of a delegation of the British Union of Fascists. They had been invited to attend the Nuremberg Rally in 1933, and whilst here she first saw Adolf Hitler for the first time. On recounting the first time she saw Hitler, she stated, The first time I saw him, I knew there was no one I would rather meet. Following this initial meeting and the rally, Unity's feelings for the dictator of Germany got stronger, and she began to worship him as a messianic figure, and she believed that he was almost like a god. She wanted to be as close to Hitler as possible, and she would do anything to do this. It's clear that Unity Mitford was attracted to the power that he had. The following year, Unity then returned to Germany in the summer of 1934, and she began to study inside of a language school in Munich, which was based close to the headquarters of the Nazi party. 
It's believed that she enrolled in this class to make sure that she could meet with Hitler again. She became obsessed with the idea of meeting him, and also began at times to stalk him. It was said that she set her mind on getting Hitler, and she managed to discover Hitler's movements throughout the day. Throughout this time, he regularly would have been seen in public in Munich, and it was said that it was very easy to find out his favourite cafes and restaurants, and from this you could work out where he would be and be staying. Hitler, at the time, had a habit of eating in a restaurant named Osteria Bavaria, and here Unity Mitford began to start sitting in the restaurant. Whilst here, she would have sat in hope that she would be noticed by Hitler when he would come in. She visited the restaurant regularly for most days for 10 months, but then, finally, Hitler invited Unity over to his table. They talked for around 30 minutes together, and Hitler paid for her bill. Unity then wrote about the moment to her father, and said it was the most beautiful and wonderful day of her life, and she said she was the luckiest girl in the world, and she stated that Hitler was the greatest man of all time. It was as if she was infatuated by Hitler, but it's believed that he also felt the same for Unity. It's thought that he had become smitten with the young blonde English student, and he was intrigued by her connections to the Germanic culture, and also that her middle name was Valkyrie, as in Wagner's Flight of the Valkyries, one of Hitler's favourite compositions. After this meeting, Mitford then received invitations to a number of huge occasions including Nazi party rallies and state dinners, and Hitler stated that she was a perfect specimen of Aryan womanhood, and it's believed that she was Hitler's ideal woman. The pair became very close, and Hitler allegedly played Unity Mitford off against Eva Brown, his new girlfriend, to possibly make her jealous and come to a decision as to who he preferred. Brown was noted for her jealousy, and she said, I, the mistress of the greatest man in Germany, and the whole world sit here waiting whilst the sun mocks me through the windows. With this she became depressed, and even then later attempted suicide. But following this, Hitler sided towards Eva Brown. But in Brown's desperate attempt to regain Hitler's favour, Unity also realised the extreme measures she would have to go to to keep Hitler's attention. Unity was still in favour, and she was present at Hitler's youth festival with the publisher of Der Sturmer, an anti-Jewish newspaper. Here she gave a very strong and repulsive anti-Semitic speech and warned the people of the danger of Jews. This was a member of the British nobility, who was now ingrained with Nazis and the Third Reich, to the point she was trusted to make such speeches. She said in her speech that she wanted to be known as a Jew hater, as someone who embraces the Nazi ideologies. Unity's beliefs that any publicity was good publicity was still in her mind, and back home in Britain there was great fury at her speech. Hitler, after this, rewarded Unity Mitford with a gold engraved swastika badge, a private box to watch the 1936 Olympics in, and a ride in a Mercedes to a festival, it's clear that Mitford had achieved her goals of being close to Hitler and being part of the Nazi party. After this speech, Unity was part of Hitler's inner circle, rubbing shoulders with men such as Hermann Göring, Rudolf Hess and Heinrich Himmler. When Hitler announced that Austria would be annexed into the German Empire, she was even with him on the balcony in Vienna at this historic moment. She then also travelled to Prague, and was arrested for distributing Nazi leaflets on the streets, but back home the British Secret Service believed she was committing high treason, or coming very close to it. In 1938, Unity was given a choice of four different apartments in Munich by Hitler, and one of these was actually being lived in by a Jewish couple. As Unity visited the apartment to discuss her plans for the rooms, the Jewish couple sat in the kitchen and cried as they knew they were losing their home, and it was being confiscated by Hitler. Inside of Hitler's inner circle, there was a significant amount of backstabbing and suspicion, and a lot of this fell on Unity Mitford. Architect Albert Speer believed that Mitford was trying to unite Germany and Britain in an alliance, but in 1939, Unity Mitford and her sister Diana were warned that war with Britain was on the horizon. It was advised that they should return home, but Unity stayed in Germany, ignoring her family's pleas. Following the declaration of war on the 3rd of September 1939, Unity was very upset and distressed. She was worried that as she was British, the Gestapo would arrest her and she even visited 
regional leaders to ask if she would be arrested by being declared a member of the enemy. Upon visiting Adolf Wagner, it was said that Unity was very distressed and upset, and he even asked two of his guards to follow her as she was deemed fragile. He was right to do this, because as Unity Mitford entered the English garden in Munich, she took out a pearl-handed pistol that Hitler had given her for protection. She pulled this out and then fired a shot into her head. It's thought that she may have been trying to replicate Eva Brown's suicide attempt to gain Hitler's favour once more and catch his attention. She managed to survive this attempt to take her own life and was hospitalised in Munich, where she was visited by Hitler. He even paid for her medical bills before arranging for Unity to return home on a stretcher to Britain. In December of 1939, her sister Deborah and her mother came to collect her while she was in hospital in Bern. She had lost roughly two stone in weight and was looking rather dishevelled. The doctor stated that the bullet was lodged in her head and they could not remove it safely. She could not walk and didn't talk very well, and her personality was changed. Her family saw the girl there as a stranger. Unity Mitford had no recollection of her attempted suicide. When she came back to England, the public were very furious and they demanded that she should be imprisoned as a traitor. Some even called for her life. The Home Secretary, John Anderson, though, showed some compassion, allowing her to live out her life with her mother and the family home. She was under the care of Britain's best neurosurgeons, and she did learn to walk again, but never recovered fully. She was stated to have had a mental age of 10 years old, and that she suffered from trauma. But she did keep some devotion to Hitler and the Nazi party, and she visited her sister Diana in Holloway Prison, who had been kept for her involvement with the enemy by the Secret Service. It's believed whilst here, Unity even had an affair with an RAF pilot, but throughout this period the Secret Service constantly reviewed her case and she was deemed to have been not a threat. She was taken seriously ill following the Second World War and it was said that the bullet in her head had caused swelling. But on the 28th of May 1948, Unity Mitford died from melangitis. Her life was an incredibly bizarre and strange one, in which she became very close with one of history's most evil men. Her obsession to become part of Hitler's inner circle would lead to her making one final dangerous ploy for Hitler's affections, but with this it ended her life and days and affiliation with Adolf Hitler. She was considered dangerous by the British at the time, and even until her death she was a rather despised figure in Britain. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.